everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I have created this easy, heatless overnight curls. I shared a picture on my Instagram of my voluminous hair and asked if you guys wanted a tutorial and it was a resounding yes. So I've just washed my hair and I'm gonna sleep on this style and take it out in the morning. This is a great one to wear in the day when you're on holiday because it keeps it out of your face and then you can remove the plaits in the evening and wear your hair curly. So I've shampooed and conditioned and I've applied my Redken Anti-Snap just to keep my hair in great condition and keep it nice and long. On top I'm doing a side parting as I always tend to wear it on the side and throughout the back I'm parting the hair through the centre. Don't worry about making it too neat because we are going to be sleeping on it. Then I'm twisting one side out the way so it doesn't tangle up with the other side of my hair while I plait one side. So I'm going to whiz through this plait and then I'm actually going to talk you through the other side. When I look back at the footage it just was a little bit clearer and easier for me to describe the plait when I braided the other side. So you want to make sure your hair is still quite damp. You don't want it to be too wet though because otherwise it won't dry overnight and when you take your plait out it will still be damp. I already have a more in-depth tutorial on how to do a Dutch braid which I will link on screen for you. So I will run through what I'm doing but you can watch that tutorial for more details. I've sectioned off a small triangle and now I've parted that into three individual strands. I'm going to pass the right strand underneath the middle one and that's now the middle strand and now I'm taking the left strand and pulling that behind the middle strand so they swap and that is basically the whole process. You're constantly putting the right one behind the middle strand but each time you do that from now on you're going to pick up a small amount of hair to add to it from the scalp and then you're going to put the left one with a small amount of hair added to it behind the middle strand. So you're always taking the right strand with a small amount of hair from the scalp behind the middle strand and then you're taking the left strand with a small amount added to that from the scalp and adding that behind the new middle strand. It can be a little bit tricky when you start the scalp because these strands are quite thin. They only get thicker the further you go down the plait because every time you're adding more hair to each of those strands so each strand then becomes thicker which makes it easier for you to hold. What I love about this look is the volume and the way to achieve that within this look is to make sure that as you go along you're blowing out the sides of the braid. I also make sure I'm lifting the root at the very top. This prevents that root area laying flat so when you take it out it's got volume. It's really important to do this as you go. Because your hair is damp it's going to be harder for you to pull at the sides of the braid and for you to pull at the root if you go too far down the braid. If your hair was dry it would slide through the weave of the braid easier but because it's damp it's going to create friction so you need to be really gentle with your hair so you don't cause any breakages. Here you can see I'm very gently tugging at the root. This is ever so slightly lifting it and creating more bounce. Then I'm also continuing to tug at the sides of the braid which creates a more blown out braid. It's really important that you only tug at the very edges of each of these little sections. If you pull from the very center, you're going to loosen the entire braid. I thought I would show you the back of how I braid my hair, just in case you're interested, because obviously I know for some people it can be quite challenging, but obviously if you keep the pattern in your head, then you can work out what you're doing. It just takes a little bit of practice. I've been able to braid my hair since I was very young, so for me it comes very easily, but practice does make perfect. And remember every few weaves stop and blow out the sides of your braid. The amount you blow it out by will determine how much of a wave you have in your hair. You want to keep it relatively tight because the looser it is the more of a wave you'll get rather than a curl. Also the more braids you create the more curlier of a result you have. I have long layers so I have to bear in mind that my hair gets thinner towards the end so I need to make sure it's not too tight as it gets towards the bottom otherwise it will be frizzy. So it's really just about finding balance that suits your hair and the style that you've got. If you're looking to create more of a beachy wave rather than a curl, I have the perfect tutorial which I will link on screen for you now. At the ends of my hair, when I tie it off with an elastic, I create a little loop with my hair so that they're not dead straight at the ends. So now I've created my Dutch braids, I'm ready to go to sleep. Okay, so it's the next morning and as you can see my hair's a tiny bit fluffy from where I've been sleeping, but it has held its shape quite well considering. So now I can feel that my hair is completely dry, so I'm going to remove my clear elastics and I'm just going to carefully undo both the braids. When you take apart each of your braids, you want to be really careful because if you start pulling at each strand, you're going to make it fuzzy and we want to try and keep the hair as intact as possible. That's going to give the tight waves more of a cold look because they're going to be nice and crisp as opposed to looking fluffy and fuzzy. If your cuticle doesn't naturally lay quite flat and you end up with a fluffy appearance to your hair then you can apply a serum or a product to your hair before you braid it. 
for me braiding it just allows the cuticle to smooth out especially once I've slept on my hair it's a lot softer looking and smoother this style is great if you have quite fine hair it's a great way to add some volume to your hair if your hair is naturally quite thick and fluffy it's a great way to tame it depending on your hair texture length thickness and density will determine how it looks you and I may not get an identical result but it'll be very very similar I'm now going to lift the root with my fingers and just give the hair a very gentle shake. If you go crazy you'll ruin your curl so be gentle with it. This will just break up your waves and create a little bit more volume. This is how my hair looks root to tip. The product that I like to use in my hair to almost just keep it quite tame and stop the fluff especially if I'm going outside is this product that I discovered by Bumble and Bumble. This is not sponsored. This is the UV Protective Dry Oil Finishing Spray. So it's got a combination of coconut, argan, macadamia and sweet almond oils and that nourishes the hair. It's a bit like using a serum but it doesn't leave a film to your hair and you can apply it over and over again and it doesn't build up on the hair which I really really love. And that is it, that is how I've been achieving my voluminous heatless curls. What I love about this is that it looks really natural, it's almost like my hair naturally grows this curly when it doesn't. What do you guys think? Would you rock this look? Let me know in the comments section below. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so. If you missed last week's tutorial, that will be on screen for you. And don't forget, you can follow me outside of YouTube and my social handles are on screen. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.